Hey there, Tony Policastro here from Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Do you ever feel like your fretting hand and your picking hand are just not talking to one another? It's like your fretting hand has a mind of its own and it's just not hitting the right note. Well, it's okay because after today's video, I'm going to show you an exercise that's going to increase your fretting hand accuracy and finger independence as well as your picking hand's accuracy and its overall control. I like to call this exercise the inside out exercise, but that's just not a fun name. So for the sake of being fun, let's just call it the annihilator. Okay, so here's the exercise. First, let's just look at one sequence and I'm gonna go through it very slowly so you understand not only what the fretting hand fingers are gonna be doing, but also what the picking hand is gonna be doing because this exercise is actually pretty demanding on both. So here we go. I'm gonna actually use the pair of strings, uh, the B string and the high E. Okay, so I'm gonna isolate the pattern to just those two strings while we're learning it. And then I'm gonna show you the full pattern, which is definitely a challenge. So here's the actual pattern, the sequence that you'll use throughout this entire exercise. You're gonna fret the first fret of the B string and do a downstroke on it. Second fret of the high E with your middle finger upstroke. Third fret of the B string with your ring finger downstroke. Pinky finger, fourth fret of the high E with your, uh, yeah, pinky finger, fourth fret of the high E, and then an upstroke there. So the first part of the sequence sounds like this. So you're always going down on the B string and up on the high E string. I'll do that one more time. Then you're gonna go ahead and flip it. You're gonna fret the first fret of the high E string, do a downstroke on it, Second fret of the B string, do an upstroke on it. Third fret of the high E, downstroke. Fourth fret of the B, upstroke. So that's the second part of the sequence. So now during that second part, you're always going down on the high E and up on the B. So I'm gonna go ahead and loop that, that uh, uh, secondary part of the sequence here just so we're all on the same page. So here we go. Down on that high E, up on the B. Down on the high E, up on the B. And all this is out of first position, meaning your index finger takes care of the first fret, middle the second, ring the third, and pinky the fourth. So the full entire sequence, if we put both of those things together, sounds like this. Okay, it's kind of a creepy horror movie kind of sound, but that's okay. The whole notion of this exercise is to build muscle memory and overall control. Okay, it's not about the musicality of it. It's about the actual physical execution of the exercise. And I guarantee you, if you get this under your fingers and do it regularly, that eventually when you go to learn a scale or a song, it's gonna seemingly fall under your fingers so much quicker. Okay, so let me go ahead. What I'm gonna do is loop that sequence a couple times through at 60 beats per minute. Okay, this is kind of the second step of learning. Now that you understand the sequence, we're gonna go ahead and loop it so that you can almost unconsciously play the sequence. So again, Again, this is at 60 beats per minute. I'm gonna go ahead and loop it, say five times, just so we go ahead and get that under our fingers. Now that we've looped the sequence, it's time to show you the full version of the exercise. Now, I don't want you to be concerned because we're really not doing anything new here. We're just moving what you know around on the fretboard so that you get used to doing it across multiple pairs of strings, basically up and down the entire fretboard. So I want you to start the sequence between the low E and the A string. So you'll go ahead and do that between the low E and the A and then drop it so that it's between the A and the D. And then drop it again between the D and the G, and then again the G and the B, and then eventually the B and the high E. When you finish up on the B and the high E, I want you to shift your fingers forward, each of them one fret, and now you're gonna do the sequence, but you're gonna do it 
uh, almost in a, what feels like it's backwards, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and run that sequence on the B and the high E, but this time you're starting on the second fret, so it sounds like this. Then you're gonna do it between the G and the B, and then the D and the G, so on and so forth, down until you reach the low E and the A. And then you can bump it up another fret and then do it from the low E to the high E, bump it up another fret from the high E to the low E, so on and so forth, until your fingers just can't take it anymore. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and loop that. So what I'm gonna do here is do the full version of the exercise. I'll do it the ascending part from the low E to the high E on the first fret. I'll bump it up a fret and then go from the high E to the low E, and then I'll bump it up one more fret and go from the low E to the high E, just so you get the gist of the exercise. And again, I'll do that at about 60 beats per minute, just so it's a nice, easy pace. You can get this exercise under your fingers. Now that you've got the exercise in its entirety at 60 beats per minute, what's next? What do you do? Is it done? Well, no, no, no. This exercise is really the gift that keeps on giving because you've only done it at 60 beats per minute so far. So what I want you to do as you continue to work with this exercise is slowly push your limits just a little bit. Maybe next time you do it, bump the metronome to 70 beats per minute and then the following time 80. And before you know it, you're hitting 100 or even more. And if you're thinking, man, 60 beats per minute, that actually was really fast for me and I don't think I really hung on. It's okay, you can drop the speed too. I just wanted to give you a nice example to latch onto. Furthermore, if you're still having trouble and you're like, man, the frets are just so far apart, I just, I'm not getting it up on the first fret. I want you to take a capo and slap it on say, I don't know, the fourth fret. Once you do that, the frets are actually closer together and you'll be able to perform the exercise with a little bit more confidence and a little bit more ease because of the fact that the frets are closer together. Once you get used to that, then you can take the capo off and slowly move it down the neck. So there's no cheating on this exercise. I want you to adjust it to wherever you're comfortable with it, really get it into your muscle memory, and then start challenging yourself, be it tempo or fretboard location. So there you have it. That's my, what I call the inside out exercise, but to be really intimidating, I'll call it the annihilator. I hope this exercise helped you a ton. And please, in the comments below, let me know how it helped you. And if you have any tips to offer everybody, please put those in the comments as well. And one more thing before you go. If you had fun with this and you felt like, man, I actually had fun and I made some progress. There's a way that you can continue to have fun and continue to make awesome progress on your guitar. And it's called Tony's Acoustic Challenge. It's an acoustic guitar program like you've never seen before. So I want you to click the link here in the video or in the description below and learn more about it and see how it can take your playing to the next level all while having fun. Can't wait to see you over at Tony's Acoustic Challenge and thanks so much for checking out the lesson.